All right, so in this video, we're going to talk a lot about processing of other types of RNA. And we're going to do this in, in a series of many videos. Now, ribosomal RNA and tRNA are processed in very different ways than mRNA. When we talk about mRNA, we mentioned the three main types of processing. We have uh, the production of the 5 prime 7 methyl guanosine cap. We have our different types of splicing, whether it's uh, autocatalytic splicing or spliceosome function. And then we also have the 3 prime polyadenylation, the 3 prime poly A tail. When we start talking about rRNA and tRNA, the processing is very different. Transfer RNAs or tRNAs are spliced, but for a very different reason. mRNAs are spliced because you have what are called introns. Okay, you sort of have an equivalent of introns in tRNA, but cleaving out those introns is not for the purpose of gene expression because tRNAs don't carry code for protein synthesis. tRNAs splicing out certain parts is important because you have to have a tRNA in the right secondary structure or we could say tertiary structure in order to be able to pick up amino acids. So it's, it's important for their function and structure, not necessarily as they are an mRNA for uh, having the right code for proteins. Okay, so very different reason. For ribosomal RNAs, we are going to have to choose some things out, but we're not going to have to glue anything together. So it's not really splicing. What we're actually going to use are things called RNases or nucleases to clip out things we don't want, but we don't have to ligate anything together because our RNAs, although they have things at the ends that we don't need, we can just clip them off. So that's not true splicing. In both rRNA and tRNA, however, some of the bases, the nitrogenous bases that we have, like adenine, guanine, cytosine, and, urids, and uracil, are going to have to be modified into what some people refer to as funny bases. They're just not, they're not your typical uh, four or five bases, or four that we have in RNA. Okay? In some cases, in rRNA and tRNA, we actually have thymine. Very unusual, but we do have that. So we'll talk about how that works. So when we're going to make some tRNAs and rRNAs, um, we're going to have what's called a pre-rRNA transcript. Okay, this is going to the yellow parts, by the way, are useless. Those are things that have to be clipped off. But the pre-rRNA pre transcript has several things. It has a 16s rRNA, it has a tRNA, it has a 23s rRNA, and a 5s rRNA. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to modify it in many ways, which do include uh, modification of bases, but we're also going to methylate several regions on it. Okay, specific bases we're going to methylate. And then we're going to cleave it up. We're going to chop it up using RNases or endonucleases. And you can see we break apart this pre-rRNA transcript into several regions. Now each of these regions has at least one of these yellow things on it. The only one that has one is the tRNA. The other ones have some on either side, and then we're going to actually use nucleases to cleave those yellow parts off. Those are sort of like introns, you could think of that way. Uh, they're useless for what we need the RNA for, so we need to get rid of those. And then we get the mature 16S rRNA, this tRNA, a 23S rRNA, and over here on the right, the 5S rRNA. Okay, so that's how we get these. One way to look at it, and this is, we're going to specifically look at ribosomal RNAs, the processing is going to be catalyzed by SNORNPs. Now, you saw in the spliceosome we had SNRNPs. Those were small nuclear ribonuclear proteins. This is not an SNRNP. This is an SNORNP. And the difference is that this stands for small nucleolar ribonuclear proteins. Remember, spliceosomes had small nuclear. These are small nucleolar. Now remember, ribosomal RNA is not made in the general area of the nucleus called the nucleoplasm. It's made in a specialized region called the nucleolus. That's where RNA polymerase 1 is. We covered that in another video. So if I want to process ribosomal RNA, I'm going to need a different type of ribonuclear protein. And these SNORPs, not SNRPs, SNORPs, are called small nucleolar ribonuclear proteins. They're, they consist of proteins and then a specific kind of RNA called a small nucleolar RNA. Okay, and these small nucleolar RNAs and these proteins combine to form these SNORPs. Well, it turns out that we have what's called a 90S pre-ribosome. It has a ribosomal RNA component and it has a protein component. This is a pre-ribosome, definitely by no means a mature ribosome. 
Well, it turns out that these SNORPs are going to do various things to it. They're going to methylate it. They're going to form something called pseudouridine. We're going to, have to cover that in another video. It's a very important funny base, as we would call them. And there's various other modifications that occur. Okay, we have a lot of other funny bases. These are funny bases that we have in ribosomal RNA. Pseudouridine you can see down here, but we also have many other flavors of funny bases for both purines and pyrimidines. Okay, those reactions are catalyzed by SNORPs. Okay. And these little lines down here are basically methyl groups. Now we're going to have initial cleavage of this pre-ribosomal RNA. It's going to cleave the protein part and it's going to cleave the ribosomal RNA part into what's called a pre-40S ribosome subunit and a pre-60S. You could imagine that this 40S is going to become the small subunit and this pre-60S is going to become the large subunit. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. What we're going to do is we're going to do additional cleavages, i.e. cleave out these yellow parts which you could sort of think of as introns. They're not true introns because we're not gluing any exons together, but they're basically useless parts that we don't need. So we're going to clip those out and we're going to get the only the mature ribosomal RNAs and the proteins they go with. And we're going to transport those out of the nucleolus, ultimately out of the nucleus and then into the cytoplasm where ribosomes we know exist in eukaryotes. And then we have mature, a 40S subunit, and a mature 60S subunit. Now the 40S subunit has an 18S ribosomal RNA. The 60S subunit has three important ones, a 5.8S, a 28S, and a 5S ribosomal RNA. These ribosomal RNAs are important for the function of these subunits because some of them are structural and then there are some that are catalytic that actually perform the mechanism, the enzymatic mechanism of the ribosome. Okay? And we'll cover that in another video. But suffice it to say, this is how ribosomal RNA is processed. There is no, no, no splicing in ribosomal RNA. We do have to cut certain parts out, but it's not true splicing. And we're also going to have other uh, modifications such as methylation. And then we have to modify some of the bases and make these over here, which are called sort of, quote, funny bases. They're just unusual, so to speak. All right. So that is the processing of ribosomal RNA. We're going to cover in the next video tRNA processing, and what we'll see is that this is actually more complicated, I think, than either uh, mRNA or rRNA processing, but it's sort of an underappreciated thing. All right, so make sure to like this video and join us in the next video where we start talking about tRNA processing. Thank you.